Well, hello. How is everybody? I hope you're ready for a live English lesson about types of conversations. I'll talk about the way I say conversation at the beginning of the lesson. For some reason, I say conversation with a Z sound which throws some people off. Let me just do some checks here and we'll start in about 23 seconds. You can see the countdown up there. Yeah, I think everything's working well. It's been a couple weeks since I've done this type of live lesson. So, we'll start in about 10 seconds. I think I've pressed all the right buttons to make sure everything works. We'll see in about three seconds. Two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about types of conversations. So, when you go through your day, you meet people and you have conversations with them. Sometimes you just have a simple conversation. Sometimes it's a little more complex. In this English lesson, I will talk about all the different types of conversations and what we call them in English. It can be something as simple as a chat with someone or something like a deep conversation where you talk about the meaning of life or something like that. So, in English, as you've seen from my little two examples there, we have a number of different ways to describe conversations and in this lesson, I will teach them to you. Before we get started though, a few things to say. First of all, this is my first live lesson. Uh in two weeks, well, this type of live lesson, right? Like a Friday lesson. I feel like I'm really big. I'll make myself a little bit smaller on the screen. I don't like sitting too close to the camera. Um and in this lesson, obviously, I'm going to talk about conversations but you are free to have conversations in the chat while I teach. You can have little conversations about the weather and other things. A little bit of small talk if you want but I am excited for this lesson. I did want to say hi to a few people. Hi to CS Team 7413, Amina, Oscar 87, Dave the Canadian is here to moderate. Uh Caitlin, Lolly Lolly. Let me scroll down. Amina, Mode Eggs is here. Hi, Mode Eggs. I like the Z. I should talk about that, shouldn't I? When I say conversation, the S comes out as a Z and I think it's very regional. So, conversation, conversation is how you should say it with the word say conversation but I say conversation like I slur the S a little bit. So, be aware of that. Hi to Stacy and Mode Eggs again. Peter, Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly, uh Rabia. Let's see here. Jorge, Life at the Bottom of China. Uh that's a funny name. Hafiez who I was chatting to earlier, James Trey um and I was asked about whether I had put the hammock up yet. So, an update on the hammock. I'm going to build a wooden frame for the hammock because I put the hammock up but it was in a place that was really close to the road. The only place I could find two trees that were the right distance apart. Um so, I'm gonna build a wooden frame maybe this week and I might videotape it. We'll see and then I will be able to put the hammock under whatever tree I want. Uh, so, Mode Ag's update. There we go. Hi to John Wedge and Habib and Kyoshi and Dorota and everyone else. Igor, James, 80s Redline, all of you who are here. But I'm eager to get the lesson started. Let me do an audio check. If you have questions during the lesson, don't forget uh, that you can do you can ask your question using the form that will be linked. And thanks to New Words with MP for gifting. Uh, a membership to Diego. Very cool. Thank you very much for doing that. So, Diego, you were just gifted a lesson from New Words with MP. Very, very nice of New Words with MP to do that. I think that's it though. Um well, that's not it. We're we're just starting. Here, let's get started with the lesson. To chat or a chat. So, the reason I put the verb and the noun is because we use that both ways. You could say you're going to chat with someone or you're going to have a chat with someone. Both would be a common way to say this and a chat is just a simple conversation. When I sell flowers to someone at market, sometimes they buy the flowers and leave but sometimes the customer might, customer might stay and chat for a bit. The customer might stand and talk about the weather or they might ask how things are going on the farm. A simple light conversation about what's happening or what's happened that week. Um they might even tell me about something that they did. Um sometimes a friend of mine will call 
and I'll say, oh, are you calling to talk about something important? And they might say, no, I just called to chat. Um, I just called to have a chat uh, to uh, kind of see how things were going today. So, chat. A chat is a simple, simple conversation. A heart to heart. So, a heart to heart and you can also say a heart to heart conversation. If you have a heart to heart with someone, it means you sit down and you talk about what's happening in your life. Um you would only have a heart to heart with someone who you trust and know well. I might have a heart to heart conversation with Jen. I might have a heart to heart conversation with my best friend. A heart to heart is a conversation where you talk about more than the weather and sports. It's more than small talk. You might talk about a concern you have with one of your children. You might talk about how you and your brother are fighting and you need some advice. So, when you have a heart to heart, it's with someone you trust and you talk about the important things in life. Things that are concerning to you. Um things that you need help or advice with. To flirt. So, this is an interesting one. When people flirt, it means they are interested in each other romantically. If a girl likes a boy, she might flirt with him. The conversation might be fun and joyful and a little bit, I don't know how to describe this, um romantic before the people are actually dating. So, when you flirt with someone, you it's not sexual. It can be a little bit like some of the words you use might be um a hinting a little bit that you're attracted to the person that you like how they look. Um but flirting is one of the first things two people will do if they like each other in a romantic way. They'll have little conversations where they joke around with each other or they say other things. I'm not doing a good job of describing this. So, I'm gonna do what I always do. Meaning of flirt. Let's see what it says. Behave as though attracted to someone and trying to attract their attention either by your behavior or by your uh by the words you use or your conversation. Um and sometimes just done for fun and not with serious intention. So, there you go to flirt. You can learn that word on Duolingo by the way. When my students do Duolingo, they they laugh about that section of the Duolingo. To argue. Well, this is definitely different than the last one. When you argue with someone, you disagree with that person. You might even raise your voice during the conversation. When you raise your voice, it means you talk louder than normal. You might even start yelling at each other. When you argue, you definitely don't agree with the other person. Sometimes though, you can have a simple argument or a nice argument. Sometimes, Jen and I argue about things. Usually, we argue about how we remember something that happened in the past. Sometimes, I remember it wrong and then Jen and I will have just a little argument. But an argument would be a time when two people disagree and they both explain how they think they're right. Um mostly, I just argue with my kids right now. Those are the people I'm most likely to argue with. A pep talk. So, a pep talk is an encouraging conversation where you try to make someone excited and energetic to do something. Pep talks are very common in sports. So, it's not totally a conversation because only one person is talking but a pep talk is when you say something like this. You can do it. Come on. You got this. Um if someone was to say to me, oh, I have an English test coming up and I think I'm going to fail. I might give them a pep talk. I might say, hey, look, you've been studying for months. Um you're ready for this. I know you will be successful. So, a pep talk is an encouraging way of talking to someone. Again, maybe not totally a conversation in the sense of having two people talk because usually a pep talk is one person talking. But a pep talk is when you encourage someone um because you think they will be successful on something they are going to do. To banter. So, when you banter with someone or when you have banter with someone, it's a noun and a verb. Um it means you talk in a way where you um it's very lighthearted. You're making little jokes sometimes as well. 
um when Brent and I did our food video, there's a little bit of banter. Um so, Brent would say something and then I would say something and it would be entertaining and maybe a little bit funny. Um banter is very common between friends. So, when friends and I go out, there's a lot of banter. We make fun of each other a little bit. We joke around a little bit. We have fun when we talk to each other. We have banter. Definitely, Brent and I had good banter both on and off camera. We were constantly talking and enjoying the conversation. So, it's a fun lighthearted conversation between friends. Usually, you have to be friends to banter with someone. Um it's not requirement. It's not a requirement but it does help quite a bit to discuss. So, you can hear by the way I'm saying it to discuss. It's a very serious way of having a conversation. Sometimes at work, we'll discuss something. You know, the boss will say too many students are late for class and the teachers will discuss how to solve this problem. So, you have a discussion or you discuss the problem and everyone will give their ideas and people will comment on other people's ideas and we will have um a discussion and then usually at the end of a discussion, you have a conclusion or a resolution. Um you decide what to do. Um most of my discussions happen at school. Um you can also have a discussion um like Jen and I can just have a discussion about how we're going to um manage the next year with kids with jobs and getting their license and do we have enough vehicles. So, Jen and I might have a long discussion about should we buy another vehicle? We're not by the way but we could have a discussion about it to joke around. So, I did mention this one already. When you joke around, you say things that make other people laugh. It doesn't mean you're telling jokes. It can mean you're telling jokes but definitely when you are um with people that you enjoy being with, you will joke around a little bit. You'll say you'll you'll make funny little comments. Um you'll kind of make fun of them a little bit but in a lighthearted way. I've used that term a couple times, lighthearted. Um but I know when I am with my brother-in-law, we joke around a lot. Um we make little jokes about each other's jobs and things like that. Like, well, that's how the so, teachers are in the summer super relaxed because we're not working. So, he makes jokes about that. So, to joke around and small talk. This is a big one. Um by the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I, I have an ice pack on my leg right now. Do you guys know what an ice pack is? I have an ice pack on my right above my knee and uh, I thought during the live stream, this would be a good time to um to use the ice pack a little bit. So, um it's not a serious injury but my leg hurts a bit. So, I thought I would ice it while I'm doing the lesson. Um let's see here. We should though switch to questions, shouldn't we? So, let me do some questions here. Um let's see. From the chat though, Rabia says a discussion is to talk with someone and share ideas in serious conversation. Yes. Mode says, yes, that's the perfect picture for banter. Brent is my banter mate in the live chat. Yes, you guys definitely banter. That's a great example. Uh let's see here. Um and May says, I got to know a lot of vocabulary in that video that you and Brent made. That was a fun video by the way, the food one. Um it was a weird day though because it kept starting to rain and then thankfully, Jen brought us a canopy. Uh let's see here. Um yeah, let me get to the questions. Let me find oh, there's a bunch of them. I better get going. From Ruslan, hello, dear teacher Bob. Um, how are you today, sir? I am good. What is the difference between small talk and chit chat? Have a nice day. So, small talk generally falls into four or five topics. You're talking about the weather. You're talking about sports. Um you're talking about what the person did on the weekend. Um yeah, it's it's not usually about the person's life. So, maybe that last thing is a bad example but small talk is generally just simple easy conversation between like you can have small talk with someone you don't know. Like, whoa, the train's late today. Yeah, and did you, it rained all the way here. Like, that would be small talk with a stranger. Uh chit chat or having a chat with someone usually means you know a little bit more about the person, okay? So, I would say that is the difference between the two. 
Renata. Hey, Bob. Long time no see. Hi, Renata. Did you and Brent get to talk converse a lot? These verbs mean the same thing, right? Thank you for the lesson, sir. Have a great day. We talked a lot. Converse can be used as well but it, that's a very um how would I describe it? Like very it's a very for- my leg's getting cold. <laughs> it's a very formal way of talking about uh conversation, okay? So, usually we just say talk but you could say converse in a if you were talking in a very formal way. Let's see here. Uh Mode, thanks for the sunflowers. Yep, just one little bucket of sunflowers. We sold them all by the way yesterday. That was nice. Hey there, cutie pie. Oops, did I just flirt with you? Yeah, so that would be a good example. You would say things to someone that kind of indicate. I think Mode's just giving an example though that you kind of like them. Sorry, that was only for the purpose of the lesson. Maybe you can teach what a pickup line is. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm not good at pickup lines. That is not my expertise. Notice this is learn English with Bob the Canadian. That's the name of the channel. Not um how to yeah, I don't even wanna this is not a dating channel and I would be very bad at teaching people how to meet people. Ario, hi, how are you? My question is how could we start a polite conversation with people in English? Do we allow to use slang words when we start a conversation? So, generally, Sorry, did I put this on the screen? I didn't. Let me put that on the screen. Generally, Ario, when I strike up a conversation with a stranger, it's usually related to an activity they're doing or that we're both doing. A good example would be if I was walking along the pier by the lake and someone was fishing, I might say, hey, have the fish been biting today? Have you caught a lot of fish today? Yesterday at market, someone was using a GoPro camera And I just said, oh, hey, what is that the latest GoPro? And they were like, yeah, it's GoPro 11. And I said, oh, Brent and I used GoPros when we went zip lining. So, generally, I would uh I would start the conversation by talking about what's happening around us. Um and then can you use slang? A little bit. Like not crude or vulgar slang but you can definitely use slang. Hey, Brent is here. Hey, Brent, good to see you. Um it just seemed like a whirlwind tour when you were here, Brent. So, it will be nice when we can meet in person again. So, I feel like we packed two days of solid work and conversation which is why this lesson is about conversation because I was remembering when Brent was here. But anyways, good to see you, Brent. Hope you are doing well. By the way, Brent has a live stream tomorrow although I think Jamie's doing it, not Brent. So, look for that. 9.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh let's see here. From Rick San. Hi, Bob. Is the birds and the bees a common expression in Canada? In what context would you use it? So, in our education system, students do learn about the human body and how it works. Part of the human body and how it works is that uh humans will get together and they will make babies. So, generally, we don't use the word sex. That's the that's the word but we usually just say, oh, they learn about the birds and the bees. Um at school. Like, oh, when they're I think age 15 or 16 in science class or in their health class, uh they will have what's called sex education where they're taught how babies are made. So, they they know how that works and we usually refer to it as the birds and the bees. They learn about the birds and the bees. Uh let's see here. From half yes. Hey, coach Bob. What are tips on making conversations concise and precise? For example, in presentation, question and answers. Feel unprofessional and wasting time if the speaker panders when answering questions. So, you'll notice in this live stream, I try to answer every question in about 30 seconds. I do the same thing if I do a presentation. I want to understand the question as quickly as possible and give an answer as quickly as possible but I don't have any tips though except be very, very, very prepared. That's very helpful. So, Nancy from Costa Rica. Hi, teacher Bob. What's the difference between an argument and a fight? Well, that's a great question. So, first of all, an argument is always two people talking and disagreeing and trying to convince the other person that they're right. A fight though can have two meanings. Sometimes at school and it's rare, two students will fight. They'll actually start hitting each other but you can also say, oh, I had a I had a fight with Jen yesterday. That just means we had an argument, okay? 
And we use the word fight a lot to talk about arguments like, oh, I got in a big fight with my boss yesterday. We just did not agree on how to start the new project. So, argument is always words. Fight, you kind of have to listen to the context um, whether it's an argument or an actual fight. It's rare for it to be an actual fight. People don't fight very often. So, from William, teacher, can you give me the secret to learning 12 easily and effectively? I'm so grateful for that. Um I'm not quite sure of the question. Can you give me the secret to learning 12 easily and effectively? I'm so grateful for that. Maybe 12 vocabulary words. I don't know. Anytime you need to learn something, you just have to use repetition. The secret to learning anything is to use repetition. So, do it more than once. Uh last question. We'll get back to the lesson from Hung. Hi, Mr. Bob. Would you like to eat Vietnamese food? I would. I guess you would. I want to share with you Vietnamese bread, milk tea and others. Hope you try them someday. So, this goes back to Brent and I did a lesson where we tasted food. So, my most recent video on my channel and Brent did one uh, on his channel. We did it in two parts. Neither is actually part one. You can watch Brent's and and call it part one or watch mine and call it part one. Um but we only tried food from I think 22 or 23 countries. Um if we do another food video someday um or if I do another food video maybe with Jen, I would try to buy food from other countries so that we eventually taste all the food from all over the world. Let's see here. Uh let's see. Brent says, I need to drive. So, I will just be listening. Oh, Brent's Brent might actually be working already. I don't go back to work for another couple weeks. So, uh let's see here. Omran says, hello to everyone. Freddie Wolf says, hi, Bob. À l'école, j'avais appris que les garçons naissent dans les choux et les filles dans les roses. Oh, I see. I don't know what naiser. I don't know the verb naiser. I have to look it up. Um naiser. Oh. Sorry, people. This is not Bob the Canadian learns French. Oh, I see. To be born. So, naître. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Uh are born in the cabbage and girls are born with red the roses. It's very interesting. Um let's see here. Isa says, a few days ago, I had my first professional conversation. It was short because it was technical terms but I was always afraid but I I have always been afraid of conversations live that I forget some words. Yes, that is the that is always the concern, right? It's uh when you have a conversation, I'm always worried when I have a French conversation that I'm going to forget. Did I do small talk? I didn't do small talk. So, small talk quite often is about um food or it's about the weather or it's about uh sports. Um it's usually not about um something personal. So, you're not going to have small talk with someone and talk about um what you did on the weekend with your family necessarily. So, at work, I have colleagues with who with whom I talk a lot about my life but I also have colleagues where it's usually just small talk like, hey, um wow, it's really raining out there today. Did you bring an umbrella? No, haha, I forgot. Did you see the game last night? Oh, yeah, it was really, really good. So, small talk is probably The simplest form of conversation that you can have to catch up. So, when you are friends with someone or when you haven't seen a relative for a long time, the first conversation you have when you see that person again, you would say that you're going to catch up. When you catch up with someone, they tell you about what they've been doing for the last few months or year and you tell them what you've been doing. So, it's nice. I have friends that I don't see very often. When I do see them, it's really nice to catch up. It's really nice to just sit down and talk about, oh, how's your son doing at university? Or, oh, you started that new job three months ago and I haven't heard how it's going. How's that new job going? It's really nice to catch up. One of my siblings, my brother lives a little bit far away from me. So, when he comes to visit, it's really nice just to sit and talk and to catch up to kind of hear how his life is going, how his job is going and those kinds of things. To reminisce. So, I have two people here and I think they're looking at photos. When you reminisce, it means you talk about the past. 
my kids the other day were reminiscing about uh the video games they played when they were kids. Um when I talked to my brother a few months ago, we would reminisce about uh when we grew up on the farm and the games we would play outside. So, when you reminisce, you talk about the past like stuff that happened way in the past. Um my friend and I went to school uh, at the same school when we were really young and sometimes we reminisce about how nice life was when we were kids because we had no we had no responsibilities in the summer. So, when you reminisce, it means you talk about the past and how things were way back um when you were younger to debate. So, this phrase um or sorry, this verb. So, you can debate. That's the verb or you can have a debate. That's the noun. Um this is something we usually use for academic situations like students might need to debate something in class. We also use this to talk about politics. Two people who want to be mayor or three or four people who want to be the mayor of a town might have a debate. So, they might debate. It means that you have a very structured formal argument about different topics. So, at school, students might need to debate whether cell phones are a good thing to have in the classroom and the teacher might ask them to have a debate and so, one person will be allowed to talk for one minute and then another person. If two people who want to be president of the United States uh have a debate, they meet and then they have a structured formal argument, discussion, conversation about what they'll do if they are voted in. Casual conversation. So, when we talk about casual conversation, we mean nothing serious. When you go out to eat with friends, you will have casual conversation. Normally, the reason you're going out is to have fun. You're going out to enjoy each other's company. You're not going out to talk about how to save the world. You're going out because you want to relax and so, you will have what's called casual conversation. Um it's really nice to have casual conversation. It's very relaxing to have casual conversation. So, you might talk about you know a movie that you just saw. You might talk about something you're going to do next weekend. Uh one of your friends might say, oh, I just went zip lining in Niagara Falls and then everyone will ask how it went. So, it's just a simple, light, easy conversation. A talking to. So, this is an interesting one. Normally, kids will get a talking to if they do something bad. So, a student might say this, I fell asleep in class and then after class, I got a talking to. Or uh someone might say, oh, My parents want me to come home at 11 at night and I came home at 1 a.m. and the next morning, my mom gave me a talking to. So, a talking to is to be scolded, to be disciplined, uh to have someone in authority like a teacher or someone like a parent uh tell you that you did something wrong. So, it's usually a conversation but one person is doing most of the talking. I haven't gotten a talking to for a very long time. I've been very good. (laughs) I haven't done anything wrong for a long time but it's not nice to get a talking to. To gossip or gossip. So, when you gossip, you talk about someone usually without them there and sometimes some of the things you say are exaggerated or maybe even untrue. So, a good example would be um there are newspapers that publish gossip about celebrities. So, it's not necessarily true. It's something that maybe they heard from someone else. Gossip is a real problem I think with teenagers. It's also a problem with adults but I think gossip is a problem with teenagers because um yeah, they just say things about other people two other people. So, in this picture, I'm not sure if these two girls are gossiping but I feel like it kind of looks like they're both talking about someone else behind their back. They're talking about someone who's not there. If I was to like if I was allowed to eliminate things in the world, 
like if I had the power, I would eliminate gossip. I think gossip is very, very mean and not a very nice thing to do. Chit chat. We had this word earlier. Um when we talk about just chatting with someone, we often call it chit chat, okay? Um it's kind of a funny, you have to say it right. Chit chat. Ch. Ch. Not shh. Don't say it that way. That's bad. Chit chat. Um so, Yeah, I would say like I went out for coffee with someone and we it was just nice to chit chat for a while. Okay. So, it is a verb as well or to have chit chat. Um I was chit chatting the other day with my mom. Um we were reminiscing a little bit and we were just chit chatting. So, it's again easy, light, simple conversation with someone. To talk back or back talk. So, this again happens between someone older or someone in authority and usually a child or a teenager. Um although it can happen between an employee and a boss as well. So, if I tell one of my kids to clean their room and they say no, I don't wanna do it right now. We would say that they are talking back and we would call it back talk. Notice it flips at least for back talk. So, it's defiance like when you defiance is when you disagree with someone. It can lead to arguments as well. But hey, let's do members only chat. Let me get that set up for a moment here. Let me find the button. If you are a member, a couple of things. First of all, thank you very much. By the way, members are people who have clicked the join button and support my channel. They get their name in green. They get to during live streams. They get to participate in uh, members only chat. They can ask questions directly in the chat during this 10 minute section. Uh and they get an extra video on Wednesdays and a little like mini lesson plan on Mondays which will be coming out again this Monday. I did take last weekend off. So, if you're a member, feel free to ask questions right now. Let me just do a little check here. Oh, my uh, headphones are kind of caught there. Nice. Okay. Uh and I will keep answering questions from the form as well as we go through this. So, let me get a question up on the screen. From Unsel. Hi, dear teacher Bob. Do you usually start the conversation or do you prefer the other party to initiate it? Have a great day. It depends on how I'm feeling. So, yesterday at market, I I I wasn't very energetic. I I wasn't I think maybe I wasn't feeling well. Um eventually, I actually went and had a nap in the van. Market was really slow yesterday by the way. Um so, yesterday, I would prefer if other people started the conversation. Normally though, when I'm well rested and energetic and happy, I will start conversations with people um fairly easily if there are people I know. If I go to a family reunion, Um or at work, it's very easy for me to start a conversation. With strangers, not as much. Uh last question from here and then I'll get to the um chat. Uh Ryochi, I teach English at a middle school in Japan but some of the students are not so motivated to learn English. Do you have any ideas to cheer them up? Yeah, that's a tough one, eh? When students aren't motivated to learn. So, usually what I do is I try to figure out what that student is interested in and then try to teach them some vocabulary about that. So, if that student really likes cars, try to teach them the vocabulary they need to talk about cars. If they like movies, if they like um skiing, if they like playing soccer or football. Um so, it it is a pretty common thing. You probably do already know this but find out what they enjoy and then try to use that to keep them interested. Okay, over to the chat from John Wedge. No questions today, Bob. Just listening and being better 1% every day to be better 365% at the end of the year. Hey, folks, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thanks, John Wedge for the thumbs up um and that is great strategy. You know, life, when you are trying to learn something, it's best to look at the small steps. Um it's nice to just Think okay, I'm gonna improve 1% every day. From Yaroslav, morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Hello, everyone. No question today. Thanks for everything you do. That's amazing. Helps me a lot. No problem, Yaroslav. Have a good day. From Amran, 
Hello, available Bob. Great lesson. My question is, have you give a talking to one of your kids before? Oh, yes. Yes. My kids from time to time, parents will give their kids a talking to. That happens for sure. John saying hello to Yaroslav and Amran correcting and saying one of. Uh, Reb- Rabia, to talk on my behalf, the meaning of this phrase. Thank you. Oh, when someone speaks on your behalf, it means they talk to someone else and they represent you. So, if I said, okay, let's say this. Let's say my boss did something I didn't like but I was afraid to talk to my boss. My coworker could talk to my boss on my behalf. My coworker could go to my boss and say, hey, Bob was a little um upset about that joke that you made at the meeting. So, it means you want to talk to someone about something but maybe you're afraid to or you're not sure how to do it. So, someone else goes and talks to that person. Freddie Wolf, hey Bob, when I was very little kid, I kept asking my mom for something I wanted on a continuous basis like a saw until I got it. Um how can you say that in the Shakespeare's language? Thanks a lot, Bob. You would probably say you were like we use the word bugging a lot like Uh, You could say something like this. Oh, my kid wants the brand new Lego set and they just keep bugging me about it. So, it implies that the kid keeps asking for it. That would probably probably be the most common thing. Like you you kept bugging your mom to buy that thing for you. From Peter, hello, Mr. Bob. I'm very happy to see you today. Your topic is great. Thank you. Lolly says, don't forget to smile. That's good. Mode says, get an earful means the same as get a talking to. Yes, right? Uh, I need to be familiar with all the synonyms because that used to happen to me a lot as a teenager. Unlike Brent, I was every parent's nightmare. So, you got a talking to a lot. Yes, I got an earful. I got a talking to. Um sometimes we even say, you know, my parents sat me down and gave me a talking to. Like that means they were like, sit down. We're talking to you about this. From Vitor, hi, Bob. Do you think when we get older, we tend to change from shallow to deep conversations? Thanks. I have noticed that. I've noticed that the amount of people I see has grown smaller um because you know when you're in your 20s, you have lots of friends but as you go through life, you can't be friends with 10 people your whole life, right? Especially if you have in-laws and relatives and your own children and those kinds of things are happening. So, um so definitely, I have I had more shallow conversations when I was younger. Uh, Thanks, Vitor. Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. When you were young, did you used to argue with your colleagues? Have a nice day. I am an argumentative person. I do sometimes, I have a flaw where I do think I'm right a lot and so, I am someone who tends to argue not in a mean-spirited way Um maybe debate would be a good word or discuss but yes, I definitely even today, I'm known at work as someone who's I'm willing to argue about something. Yes. Uh Amran, sorry, Bob. I meant valuable, not available. Oh, I'm available and valuable. You could use both words. Peter says, I can't find the link yet. I wanna ask, what's the difference between controversy and argument? So, a controversy is just a general situation. You know, there's a lot of controversy at the town hall because the mayor spent too much money. So, it just means that there's something happening that's not good. You know, there's a controversy at the factory because um the workers aren't working hard enough. An argument is when people actually start talking about it. So, um Hey, uh Eugene's here from Automation Secure Home. We will go to CTV station to join the family feud this Sunday. Do you want to join? Are you watching it or are you going to be one of the contestants? I'm curious, Eugene. Uh <laughs> Brett from Speak English with this guy. Yes, I was the perfect child. Every parent's dream. Having met Brent, I'm not a hundred percent sure that that's true. We uh, have a phrase in English. Maybe that's true in Brent's own imagination but or maybe he was a perfect child. Who knows? Okay, let's get through these last few. Um by the way, if you are wondering where's the English lesson? Maybe you're new here. Um it will start again in about two minutes. Let me just finish off these questions. 
Uh, John says, you probably become salt and pepper because of your five kids because you talk to them at some point. This is a joke, Bob. Just complimenting Amrin's question. Yes. I think that kids give you gray hair. That's true. Yes. You can see my gray hair. Mode says, I want to ask how market went yesterday but you already answered that. You sold all the sunflowers and had a nice nap in the van. That's correct. Although, it was very slow. We brought less flowers than normal. A little bit less because there was a severe thunderstorm warning and there was a chance of rain. So, when the forecast says rain, less people come to market. Even though it ended up being a beautiful afternoon, there were less people there. So, we uh we we brought the right amount. Uh let's see here. New words with MP says, what will we say for investigation? Yeah, so an investigation isn't really a conversation although there might be interviews during an investigation which is when like the police talk to someone. We also say they question someone. So, that would be what I would say. Um Rabia, Frosty knows what does it mean? I don't know. I'm not familiar with that term other than when you go outside you your nose gets really cold in the winter. Uh let's see here. Mode, last question or last comment. Mr. Bob, so you have the same doubts I do about Brent's childhood. I say he was actually a perfect child. And then from Stacey, when I first learned about small talk, I was confused about it because we don't have that kind of culture in Korea. People don't usually talk with strangers here. I still don't know how. So, it's a, I have an interesting story about that. Let's be, let me turn off uh, members only chat for a sec here. Uh, I had a friend visit from China once. Um and we went out and my friend from China um found it very strange that I would talk to strangers. I didn't think I was talking to that many strangers but um we went to the beach and as we were walking I said, how's the water today? And the person said, oh, it's pretty cold. Um and I think it in some cultures, it's just more natural to talk to strangers. It might also just be my personality because I'm a teacher. Maybe I'm more comfortable just talking to someone but um yeah, I that my friend from China was uh surprised at the number of people that I talked to. Anyways, let's get back to the lesson. Let me do an audio check. Mm -hmm. I think everything's working great but you know, I did wanna check because Brent and I hauled all this stuff outside and then brought it all back inside uh last weekend so or two weekends ago one-sided. So, this is an interesting one. A one-sided conversation happens when there are two people or three people or four and one person does all the talking. So, when you have a one-sided conversation, it's not usually enjoyable um, unless you're the person talking maybe. Um I've had this happen a few times in my life where I go to a party or I go to a meeting or an evening at work. Sometimes we have evenings at work where you know parents and other people come in Um, or I go to a wedding uh, and you end up talking and the one person in English we would say likes the sound of their own voice and so you're trying to have a conversation and you're you're kind of bored because one it's a one-sided conversation where one person does all of the talking. It's kind of like these live lessons. (laughs) Okay, sometimes a conversation will go over your head or you will just say, oh, it was over my head. So, if you were ever to talk to Einstein which you can't do but if you could time travel and go back in time, my guess is if I had a conversation with Einstein, it would be over my head. I wouldn't understand it. It, When something goes over your head, it means that you don't understand what the person's talking about. Um I have cousins on my mom's side of the family who are scientists. When we see each other, sometimes they'll talk to each other about chemistry and chemicals and the conversation will just go over my head. I I don't know what they're talking about because I don't know a lot about those kinds of things. Behind closed doors. When a conversation happens behind closed doors, it means that you are not part of it. So, let's say, let me think of a good example here. Let's say you aren't working very hard at work. Let's say you're making a lot of mistakes. Your manager 
and the owner of the company might have a meeting behind closed doors to talk about you. They might have a conversation in a room with the door literally closed. And if someone said, how's it going at work? You could say, oh, I don't know, but um, I'm not doing, I'm not doing a very good job and I saw them having a meeting the other day behind closed doors to talk about me. So, when a conversation happens behind closed doors, it means it is private. Unwanted. So, an unwanted conversation is a conversation that happens when one of the people doesn't actually want to have a conversation. So, this is not a very nice situation here. Uh this lady doesn't want to talk to this guy. It's obvious by how she is sitting that she is not interested. So, this guy is um talking to her even though she doesn't want to. So, she would then say, oh, I just had this unwanted conversation at lunch today. Um Joe came up and he's I don't like Joe and he just uh was just an unwanted conversation. So, simple to understand. An unwanted conversation is a conversation that you do not want to have but the other person kind of makes you have a conversation with them. Not fun. I think kids could say this too sometimes like oh I'm in trouble. My parents are gonna give me a talking to and that is gonna be an unwanted conversation. Private. So, you can see these two people in the back are trying to have a private conversation. So, a private conversation is a conversation where you don't want other people to hear it. Um this fly wants to be part of this lesson and I'm trying to have a sorry, I can't work that in as private. Um but a private conversation would happen um when you're talking about something where you don't want the other people to hear. So, my mom and I had a private conversation the other day um about I I don't wanna give too many details but Uh, she had a concern with someone. So, mom and I had a private conversation before she went and talked to that person. That's pretty vague but you don't need to know all the details of my mom's life. To make amends. So, sometimes you argue with someone. Sometimes you have a disagreement. Sometimes you might say mean things and then you need to make amends. When you have a conversation where you make amends, it usually means people are apologizing. Either one person is apologizing or both people might apologize. Let's say that you got into a disagreement with your cousin and your cousin called you a jerk and you called your cousin a jerk and you just got really angry and then you both walked away. And then the later that day or the next day, you realize you weren't very nice. And hopefully, your cousin is thinking the same thing. You would eventually have a conversation where you make amends where you say, hey, sorry, I didn't mean to call you a jerk. Um you know, I thought about what you said and you made some good points and then hopefully, your cousin does says the same thing. Um but to make amends usually means to apologize either one person or both people who were involved. And then, a deep conversation. When you have a deep conversation, it means you talk about the meaning of life. Why are we on this planet? Uh usually in Canada, deep conversations happen around the campfire. Uh usually people sit around a campfire and eventually um some people will start to have a deep conversation. They'll start to talk about you know where did this world come from? Where what's the future gonna be like? Like you could have a deep conversation about what the world will look like in 10 years or how do we save the planet if you're concerned about the environment. So, a deep conversation is a serious conversation about life or about the world or about um politics and those kinds of things. So, hey, that is the end of the formal part of the lesson. I'm going to pop over and answer whatever questions are left in the form. Um let's see here. I'm just reading some of the uh chat in the in the chat. There's chat in the chat. Did you notice that? Uh Omran says unwanted conversations happen to me every single day. They're not fun. Uh definitely not. And Stacy says to John Wedge, yes, it's true. You could try small talking with strangers in Korea but it's not that usual. Some people m- could answer but others would could be burdened. It might be an unwanted conversation. Ah, it would be, wouldn't it? There's this happy Bob the Canadian guy trying to have conversations and people are like, just leave me alone. Yes, I get it. 
Okay, let me get back here. Let's see here, questions on the screen. Dimitri, hey Bob, I noticed the longer you don't see somebody, the more you wanna hug them after a long time when you finally met, although we're not so close. Same for you. Yes, with family, sometimes with friends, it really just depends. Um, But yeah, the longer, the, the longer you go without seeing someone, the more likely you'll want to give them a hug. Now, that's also very cultural. Um, so, in North America, that would be true. Like, um, let me see. Like, I'm trying to think. It, it's mostly for family for me. Like, I will hug. If I don't see my sister for a long time, I might give her a hug. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I would give my friend a hug. Depends how long I have, it's, it's gone or how long since we've seen them or I've seen them. Nima, hello, dear teacher Bob. What is the difference between gossip? You gotta drop the ah and a rumor. Thank you so much. So, when you are gossiping, you might be spreading rumors. So, a rumor is when you talk, you say someone did something and you might exaggerate it or it might be untrue. Um but basically, you're saying things that aren't true. Yeah. So, a rumor would not be true and gossip is just the general term for spreading rumors and talking about people. Uh, let's see here from Stacy. Hi, teacher. Thank you for the lesson. In Korea, people say it is not a good idea to talk about politics or religion. It's gonna switch religious to religion at family gatherings. Is it the same in Canada? Yes. It's also why I don't talk about politics or religion uh, or sex. I just talked about flirting today but um, I kind of leave that off my channel because those there are a number of topics that can be very controversial uh, and so, I don't wanna cause arguments. Um, I just wanna teach English. So, but yes, at family gatherings, it's probably wise to avoid those types of conversations. Philippo, hi, Bob. Hope you're okay. In an argument, little fixer with someone that can't understand that he's wrong, how can you call the act of saying, okay, you're right. There's no way with you. In English, we often say, we'll just have to agree to disagree. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree, which means that two people like neither person will change their mind. So, you're like, well, we'll just have to agree to disagree. Let's see here. From Mr. Shirwani. Hi, how are you, Mr. Bob? I hope you have a great weekend. I'm wondering, have you ever been to an Asian country? Little fix there. It's very hot in my country. I want to stay abroad in the summer. I have not. Someday, I will. Um, Filippo did give a super chat though and said, hey, Bob, seeing you and Brent together was so funny. It was fun. I'll be honest. Um, The visit was too short but at the same time, if Brent had stayed longer, do you know how if something feels too short, it was probably the right amount of time. I think it was the right amount of time. Um I'm planning to go see Brent next summer. I'll probably go for two days. I think two days is a good amount of time for two English teachers from YouTube to hang out with each other. It's not that I got tired of Brent. It's yeah, I think you know what I mean. Brent knows what I mean. We had a fun time. It was a good amount of time. We have families and other stuff to do as well and I think if I was to visit Brent for more than two days, I might get homesick um but we'll see. Uh last question. Fabian, hi teacher Bob. Thanks for this English lesson. I have a doubt. Do you know the difference between argue and discussion? Thanks a lot. Greetings. So, an argument can be heated. A discussion is usually very polite. Like, we're going to have a discussion. Uh, An argument can be polite as well but an argument can lead to people getting angry. An argument can lead to people yelling at each other. An argument just is a little can be a little more rough I would say. A discussion is usually quite nice and calm. So, that is how I would describe the two. Well, hey, that is the end of the questions. That is the end of the lesson. Yaroslav, thank you so much for being a member for 16 months. Our Yaroslav says, have a great weekend ahead everyone and then just from the chat let me switch to my other screen here and get my glasses. I wanna read a little bit. Uh hi Bob. Thank you for your lesson. Can you explain what's the difference between I am found fond of or keen on? So, fond. You gotta take the U out otherwise it's found. Uh we don't use keen here but when you're fond of something or keen on something, it means that you like that thing or that person actually. Uh let's see here. Kima Kima says, thank you for this interesting lesson. Please, can these statements interrupt the conversation? Punctuate 
So, when you punctuate, it means you say something that kind of ends the conversation for sure. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna say bye to Vitor, Lolly, 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 Mode Eggs, Ranny, Spy Dave. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Stacy, Lolly, I'm saying the same people twice. Wilma, CS Team, Bobo, I'm saying bye to anyone who I see here. Bye to Eugene. Um, let's see here. And Wanda Prado, and Huawei, and Ralph, and Filippo, and Yusra, and Yaroslav, Sophia. Bye to all of you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye to John Wedge. Julie Liu, Freddie Wolf, au revoir. Um, Dimitri, Freddie says, Bob, thanks so much for the lesson. Dimitri says, thank you, Mr. Bob. Bye to Fabian, Key Park. Good to see you, Key Park. Um, Claudio, Caitlin, 80s Redline, everybody else. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Um, and by the way, this Tuesday's lesson, I think it's gonna be a fun lesson to watch. I I drove my van and I hooked up three cameras and I went, oh, you'll have to wait and see. It's it's gonna be fun. It might involve food. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Bye.